Chapter 8 The old man walked back and forth, his feet shuffling across the cave floor. He stopped at the entrance and looked out across the valley. He was still breathing heavily, but the storm went, was in him. That was in him was over. I'm sorry, he said. It is a thing that must be handed down. My Faja was a cave painter, and now I am one. That is the way it has always been. It cannot start from nothing. He stopped his pacing and looked down at Teo. You must learn to live with things that you cannot change. Teo sighed deeply, biting his lip, trying to forget. A short while later, they sat cross-legged on the cave floor, eating some freshwater mussels that Teo had scooped up from the creek. With his sharp flint knives, they pried open the blue-black shells and picked out the soft flesh within. The smell of birch tea filled the little cave as the leather sack brewed over the open fire. They ate in silence and finally Tao spoke. Then it can never be? The old man nodded impatiently. I tell you again, unless you are born of a leader or chosen by the elders, it would not be accepted. He opened another shell and ate the contents, washing it down with a sip of birch tea. For a thousand summers, it has been in the minds of the people and they cannot be changed. And I must not do the thing I love. I must not make images. You want me just to walk away from my dream? Kobe! Graybeard looked out through the cave entrance, gazing off into the distance. And he tugged at his beard, yoink, for a moment, deep in thought. Yes, yes, do it if you must, but you cannot let others know. They just wouldn't understand. Always rub out your images when you are finished. The old man glanced at the cave wall where he had blotted out the pictures. You have made a good beginning, he said but you have much to learn about form and shape. You must study the animals closely. See how they look when they run, while they're lying down. Notice their color, their fur, in the bright sun and underneath the shadow of a tree. Then Greybeard smiled. He had completely forgotten his outburst and his eyes shone as he spoke. Go up to the high plains and watch Saxon, the sacred bull. See how the heavy muscles ripple beneath his shoulders. Watch how he moves his head and remember the angry fire in his eyes. Then put all of that into your image. It is something like magic said Teo, his voice rising with excitement. The old man picked up his deerskin bag, shaking it and rattling it within the contents within. Here's the real magic. With these graven stones, I can speak to the spirits of the animals and bring good hunting. He took out seven flat stones, each larger than his open hand each engraved with a figure of a different animal. He picked out one and held it up for Teo. On it was the engraving of a mammoth. Teo gasped. <gasps> it's the mountain that walks, my favorite. <laughs> you did it. Yes, said Greybeard. 
Three summers have passed since they came through the valley, and I drew this sketch. They have not been here since. That is true, the old man said. But for now, from this sketch, I can draw on the other walls of this secret cave, and I can draw line for line, making the shape exactly as it was when I first saw it. And this way, I can speak to the spirits and the great beasts and call them back into the valley. With the point of his flint knife, Gabriel began copying the picture on the dirt floor of the cave. Here. First, make a large outline of the whole animal. Next, find the high point of the shoulders. Then, slope the back all the way down to the tail. Graybeard swung his hand over the drawing, his eyes shining again as he drew the legs, the feet, the trunk, using short strokes to show how the hair and the fur. Tail leaned forward, watching intently and very closely. Slowly, the rough picture of the mammal mammoth began to take shape as the old man sketched in the curves of the tusks and the small beady eyes. You must do this over and over, said Greybeard. That is the way you learn. But I must warn you again. Make sure you rub out your images as soon as you are finished. Greybeard stood up and erased the drawings with the toe of his deerskin sandal. Now, I gotta bounce. I gotta get going. I gotta get up out of here. I have to go to the clan, to the camp, to see your people. Tonight's there's a celebration in the ritual of the hunt. Since he was not the chosen one, Teo couldn't go. He was sorry to see Greybeard leave. There was so much more he wanted to know. He got up, not directly looking at the old man. I'll go with you part of the way, he said. They climbed down the ledge, and with the sun shining in their eyes, starting out along the foot of the cliffs, Teo hopping along, using his spear as a crutch with Ram trotting at his heels. You have to go a little more slowly if I am to keep up, said Greybeard, stifling a cough. Teo slowed his pace to that of the old man's. If I went to the mountain people, maybe they would accept me as a cave painter. The old man stopped and shook his head. You just don't understand, he said. The mountain people, the lake people, the valley people, they're all the same. Their life is filled with magic and taboos and evil spirits. If you cross the river into their land, you will not be welcomed. Yet, you travel from clan to clan without harm. What's up with that? said Teo. I told you. I was born into the spirit world through my Faja. And now I can go where I want and do what I want. Because I have magic. By striking stones together, I can make fire. By rubbing a dab of mud on a skin hut, I can make a barren woman give birth for a child. By drawing the outline of a beast on a cave, I can bring good hunting. They walked on in silence. Teo was deep in thought, and then he said, Even though you can do all that and say all those things, doesn't make it true. Is it really magic? Greybeard shrugged in his shoulders and tugged at his beard again. I do not know. Perhaps it is nothing more than words. Perhaps it is nothing more than shadows. Yet, I am sure it brings hope to the people. 
and boldness to the hunters. Many times the things I foretell do not happen. The people never question it. If the things that I do foretell come to pass, they are happy. One thing I know, if they wish to call it magic, then let it be so. If I try to tell them otherwise, they will get angry. Here, said Greybeard, stopping once again. I'll show you something they call magic. He reached into his deerskin pouch and took out a flat round object. He held it in the palm of his hand and it glistened in the sunlight like a little silver fire. This is a shining stone. It was dug out of the earth and polished in the sand by my father many summers ago. They were standing in the opening of the blazing sun high to the west. Greybeard walked slowly around the boy, flashing the sunlight off the glittering stone, and suddenly he pointed it directly at Teo's face. The boy threw up his hands. He was blinded by the light. Greybeard smiled and placed the shining stone back into his pouch. You see? It's not magic. It's only the power of the sun, nothing more. A long time ago, though, it saved me from an angry bear. When they reached the edge of the oak forest, Teo slowly slowed his steps. Um, it's best that I stop here, he said. I can't take Ram into the camp. It's just too dangerous to get any closer than this.